answers are one of the most transparent people, if not the most transparent sign when it comes to their feelings, you know? Like they allow themselves to feel that and they're not shamed by it. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, hi, my name is Sarah and I love to talk about astrology. And one of the things I love to do is find astrology lists online, zodiac lists online, and I react to them. So I go over every single sign and I react to it. I give my thoughts and that's what we're going to do today. So the list I have today is all about what the signs are hiding. Mm -hmm. So let's just get into it. <laughs> Aries and honestly before I even start I'm really interested to know like is it how do you guys feel about the fact that it's always like the same order like obviously there's an order you know with the signs Aries being first Pisces being last and I usually go in that order like is that boring to you guys like should I like switch it up ever like start with like Pisces and then like go backwards or I don't know or like start with Virgo and then you know make Leo go last like let me know if y'all want me to switch it up sometimes because I can definitely do that but anyway Aries. What Aries is hiding is really pure and innocent and wants to love everybody and see everyone smile. Oh, is that what you're hiding, Aries? I do agree that Aries is very pure and innocent. When you're the first sign of the zodiac, Aries is the baby of the zodiac. That's why they can also be very temperamental and they can, you know, get a little aggro very quickly. Look at babies, you know what I mean? Like they need their needs met and when their needs are not met They're crying and they're annoyed and they're throwing fits, you know, that's very much Aries They know what they like and when they don't get what they like, you know, sometimes they can throw a little hissy fit But that's fine. Besides all of that I do feel like genuinely Aries does have this like sweetness to them And I think it gets overshadowed by the fact that you know, they're a fire sign They're a cardinal fire sign and you know, we all know about the Aries and the Martian rage but also with that comes a lot of love as well. Like Aries truly has so much love to give. I always say that Aries people, like they can be your biggest motivators truly. And they want to see their people when they want their people to be happy. And they really will fight the good fight for you and protect you, you know? So when it says see everyone smile, like I genuinely think that like behind their like tough exterior, Aries is really such a sweetheart. And they're so, so loyal. They're so loyal to the people that they love. And when you're a protector, you can't help but be loyal. Everyone around you that you ride with is protected and loved and loved fiercely. That's how I would describe Aries energy is that they love fiercely. Um, but I think it's harder for people to see that side of Aries because they lead, you know, with their intensity, um, with that fire energy. But really, Aries is a big baby and they truly, truly have such big hearts, but they lay it all out there. They wear their heart on their sleeves a lot, you know? And when you do that and you're a fire sign, you know, your emotions can sometimes be used against you because people are just seeing you explode, but they're not really seeing where this energy is coming from, you know? Or they're seeing you being loud, but they don't understand that you're loud because you're passionate. So I think that's something that Aries placements definitely hide. Okay, next is Taurus. What you're hiding is that you're not always right. I'm actually crying, wheezing, dying, laughing at that. But the thing is, is like, are they hiding that? Or are they in their own Delulu world and they truly don't think that they are never wrong? Like, I think that's what it is. Like, I don't think like Taurus is like pretending out here. I mean, like, I'm always right. And then like on the inside, they're like, maybe I'm wrong. I don't even think they have that thought. Like, I don't know, I, I don't know. You you Taurus placements, let me know. I genuinely think that like, they stand firm in their ways of doing things. And you know, that stubbornness truly comes from the heart. So I don't know if they're really hiding that. Like that's something that they truly feel. But then maybe what it's implying is that because they can be such hard headed, stubborn people, they will never admit that they're wrong. And I think that is true. Like I genuinely think Tauruses have the hardest times um, admitting when they're wrong alongside with Virgos. I think Taurus genuinely, like they think it's embarrassing, obviously. I think everyone thinks it's embarrassing when you're wrong, but like, newsflash, everyone is wrong at some point. Some more than others, but everyone is wrong at some point in their life. Like you don't know everything, but I do think it's harder for them to admit that. And they'd much rather just be silent 
then like try and explain, oh yeah, like maybe I was wrong. Like they'll kind of just like disappear is what I've noticed with Taurus energy. And they're kind of hoping that like you forget about it and you could just like move on. Like don't bring it up that like it was proven that I was wrong. Cause then they'll be real mad at you, you know? Okay, Max is Gemini and what you're hiding is you just want to be loved. Mm. I think that is true because Listen, when you are an air sign, specifically a Mercury ruled air sign, I feel like Gemini's in general, like not that they're going out of their way to be like, I want to be interesting, but like that is how they show people who they are, like through their knowledge, through, you know what I mean? The random facts that they know, how they connect with people is through just these quick witted conversations, right? And I think they want to be accepted by people. They really, really do. But because they're such social creatures, they're not really giving people and themselves the chance to always form these deep connections. But I do think there's always that like lingering feeling of like, ooh, like should I get deep with this person? Oh, should I get deep with this person? But they can very much hide behind these superficial or over the surface relationships just because it's so easy for them to form it. So I think it's really easy for Gemini to play it off. Like if they got their heart broken or if their friend fucked them over, like Gemini is so good at letting it go, you know? Also because much like Sagittarius, their sister sign, they let shit go and they're just excited about life. What, what is to come? They're excited about the future and they're hopeful about it. So that's another reason why I feel like they let shit go. But that doesn't mean that they don't have a heart and they don't sit there and think about, you know, the times that people have fucked them over. Like when they have their moments where they're thinking about it, it really does hurt their feelings. Like Gemini does have feelings. It's just that they can easily, easily, easily bury those feelings and fill them with new experiences, you know? But deep down, I think Gemini truly wants to be accepted and they want their knowledge and their brain to be to be seen as something of value, you know? And another thing with Gemini is that they're known to be like the comedians, right? They're always like willing to make a fool out of themselves, you know, to make people laugh. And I think people that are funny like that and that can laugh at themselves like that, they want to be loved. Like they want to take that risk to make everybody laugh. And as long as everyone's happy, like they're happy. Like they want to be that person that brings joy to other people and they're willing to sacrifice themselves to make people laugh, you know? Like that's how they want their friends and their partner and their family to think of them as someone that brings them happiness. Like that's how they wanna be valued and loved. Okay, next we have Cancer and what Cancer is hiding. It's fighting super hard every day and it's tough as hell. Yeah, you know, Cancer being ruled by the moon. You know, they're called the crybabies. Um, I, I've called them that, I think everyone has called them that. They themselves have probably called themselves that, but it's because they're ruled by the moon. You know what I mean? Like when you're ruled by the moon, your emotions are ever changing and ever evolving and it's up and down, it's a roller coaster. So they're dealing with a lot of demons, all right, you guys? Like they're dealing with these demons um, and, and it, you know, gets the best of them a lot of times because if they haven't figured out how to emotionally regulate themselves, all of these emotions that are coming to them, they genuinely don't know what to do with it, you know? And it's really, really tough to do anything in life when your emotions are taking over. And I think when cancers are able to use their emotions to get what they want out of life and are able to regulate their own emotions or when they're feeling sad, create something out of those emotions, that is when they're the happiest. But I do think cancers honestly don't get enough credit for how tough they are because of how sensitive they are. And yes, because they're always expressing their feelings. So people are like, oh, you're so sensitive. But like to be sensitive, actually you have to be really, really tough. It's true. And maybe that doesn't make sense, but if you are able to express your emotions and cry in front of people and just, you know, whatever, like just let it pour, let it rain, let yourself release all of that, I think that means that you're a tough individual because you're being honest with yourself about your feelings, you know? And I think cancers are one of the most transparent people, if not the most transparent sign when it comes to their feelings, you know? like They allow themselves to feel that and they're not shamed by it. And we're looking at the two other water signs you're probably thinking, well, why aren't they the ones that are the most transparent with their feelings? Well, Scorpio being ruled by the eighth house and Pluto being one of its rulers, Scorpio has a lot of hidden emotions and we can sometimes feel shame when it comes to expressing certain emotions. And then we have Pisces, again, very emotional, yes, expresses their emotions, but because they're ruled by Neptune, sometimes they can be in La La Land and in fantasy land and kind of, kind of mixing their feelings up with one another and you know, not really being honest with themselves about what's real and what's not. So with that being said, when I think of cancer as a water sign, I think of the water sign that is the most transparent with their feelings and 
when you are like that, you are tough, you know, because it doesn't matter who's around, it doesn't matter what's going on, if you're feeling your feelings, you're feeling your feelings, and that to me shows a sign of strength. Okay, next we have Leo. For Leo, what you're hiding is, is super insecure. I am really trying to think about this one because, okay, my thing is, is everyone can be insecure, right? So I'm really trying to put myself in the headspace of whoever created this. I think they whoever made this list picked this for you guys because when you think of Leo, you think of the most confident sign, right? Like the one that is willing to put themselves out there, the one that doesn't mind being watched, the one that always shows up for themselves and wants to look good and feel good and socialize and be in positions of power, right? And I think when you are someone that portrays, you know, that essence all the time, you have probably these moments of insecurity behind closed doors, but you never allow other people to see it. Like, I think that is the thing with Leo is that they have a very limited amount, if any, amount of people that they actually share their insecurities with and people that actually see them when they're in the dumps, you know? Like they truly don't want anyone to see them when they're going through it because to them it's a sign of weakness. Not that it is, I'm not saying it is. I think everyone, you know, is insecure when it comes to certain things. But I think because Leo presents themselves as so confident and wants to show up and do the best all the time, those moments of insecurity are something that they really want to hide because they don't want that to be used against them, you know? Like, they don't want a pity party. That's the thing with Leo energy. They hate people pitying them. They hate people feeling sorry for them. Like, they want to show up in life and be strong, you know? They want to be known for their strength, you know? This is the lion. So if they're going through moments of insecurity, they really want to hide that because, again, they don't want it to be used against them and they just don't want to be known for that, you know? They don't want to be known as someone that has a weakness. But everyone does, Leo. Everyone has everyone has a weakness, but I do respect it. I, I know why you do what you do because I'm kind of the same way as a Scorpio. Like, only certain people get to see me when I'm going through it and only certain people get to know what is bothering me because it's just, frankly, not anyone else's business. You know what I mean? Like, it's really, really not. And Sadly, most of the people in this world will use certain things that you share with them, you know, to their advantage, you know? So maybe I'm being a skeptical Scorpio, I don't care. I have done enough research, life research, to know that not everyone needs to know what you're insecure about. And I think a lot of people, when it comes to dating, this is the best advice I can give. Do not, at the beginning stages of, you know, you dating someone, tell them exactly what your ex did to you and how they fucked you over and they did this. Do not, do not give them a plan, a step-by-step -step plan of what they can get away with. You know what I mean? And I'm being truthfully honest here, you guys. Like, don't tell people when you're just getting to know them the specifics and the details of how someone wronged you. Like, they don't really deserve that, really. They really don't. All right, next we have Virgo. Okay, for you. Oh, this one just, I, I know my Virgos are gonna, are gonna be like, yes. Just wants to be able to relax for a fucking second. Woo! I know. I know you Virgo placements are feeling seen. Like, actually. Find a Virgo today and tell them to sit down. Tell them to take three deep breaths. Actually, if you're a Virgo, that's what we're gonna do right now, ready? We're gonna take three deep breaths. Now, drop your shoulders, relax the muscle in between your eyebrows. Can you do that? Unclench your jaw. There you go. Doesn't that feel better? Virgos are always so freaking stressed for good reason when you are such a productive person, when you're someone that is constantly going through your to-do list and trying to figure out what's the best way to do this. How can I do that more efficiently? You know, you're always, always, always thinking about your routine, your schedule, what needs to be done. When you're doing all of that, it's freaking tiring. Like they are literally their own personal assistant to their personal assistant to their personal assistant. Like they are keeping themselves on track. Like this is a highly disciplined individual naturally. And I think sometimes when Virgos are told to relax or when they have some free time, they're always like filling it up with something. And I think internally, there's probably a voice in your head that's like, hey, I need a fucking break, you know? And like, you should give in and take a freaking break, Virgo. You really, really should. And I know it's really easy in this day and age and in this society to think that you're lazy 
and that you're not disciplined if you take a break because of capitalism. You know, you're always supposed to have something to do, have a side hustle and have a second side hustle and have a third side hustle. Like seriously, fuck that. Like take some time to yourself, really relax. And honestly, when you take time to relax, you show up better doing everything else that you're doing. You know, like allow your brain to catch up with your body. You know, I feel like you guys' brain is working overtime and doing laps around your physical body. And one of the main aspects of Virgo, the sign, you know, and the sixth house is health, right? Like the emphasis is on health. And I think Virgos in general, you guys need to be more conscious of your health and how many breaks you're taking and really be honest with yourself about your routine and your schedule and what you can take off of it and what you can implement, what sort of wellness things you can implement in your daily schedule to make your life easier. And I think you guys are sometimes ashamed when you want to break and I just don't like that. I really don't like that. There is no shame. There's no shame in taking breaks and relaxing and having lazy days. All right, next it's Libra and what you're hiding. is super smart. Mm. Didn't I just say this in the last episode? Libra is the most socially intelligent sign ever. And they can be, you know, book smart too. But when I think of Li Libra, I think of like socially intelligent. And the thing is, it's funny because I feel like in mainstream media or whatever, you look at Libra and what people say about Libra, they're like, oh my God, Libra is so superficial. Like Libra, all they care about is their looks. You know what I mean? Trust me. They do care about all of that, but they're also very fucking smart. Like that is why Libra rolls over the law. You know what I mean? And justice. Like Libra very much understands society, people, how to connect with people, you know, how to feel seen and understood by people, how to understand people to get what you want from people. And I know that sounds socially climby. And yes, that can be um, one of their negative traits, you know, is the fact that they can be socially climby but also it can be a positive trait in the sense that they can easily make so many different connections. They're actually okay with you downplaying their intelligence because then they can really show you what's up. You know what I mean? And they are that dark horse when it comes to, it's literally like legally fucking blonde, truly. Like, oh, you think I can't do shit cause I'm wearing pink and I got a little puppy on my hand? Oh, let me show you, let me show you. You know, and again, Libra is a cardinal sign. So they have that motivation. So if they use the motivation they get from being a cardinal sign and their social skills, you know, and their Venusian ways to look good, truly they're unstoppable. So I think they don't really care when people think that they're dumb or whatever, or that they're an airhead or whatever. I mean, I don't know if you guys are okay with it, but they don't really care because they know, they know what's up and they know what they can get done. And just to be 100% honest, I think a lot of Libras, it's really easy for them to get what they want using their charm, using their looks, using their, you know what I mean? again charming personality so they don't always need to be the smartest person in the room even though again internally they know they're smart but it's really easy for them to get what they want you know using their looks and using their charm okay next is Scorpio Scorpio what you're hiding just wants to help people out yeah why are we hiding that though I think with some of these it's like why are we hiding it like let's be upfront about it but I do think it's true I think us Scorpios, when obviously we're operating from our higher vibration and when we're finally, you know, comfortable with our energy and our healing energy and comfortable with our intense emotions, all we want to do is help people understand their heavy emotions and understand that what they've gone through does not determine where they can go. And even if you're, you know, at your lowest and you feel like, what is the point of life? Like, actually, like, is it worth it for me to want to go on if there's this much pain in my life? And Scorpio placements, I know you guys know that feeling. And even if we're at rock bottom, sometimes we even take it further down because guess what? We feel comfortable there, you know? It's low key where we thrive because we're really seeing the ugly truth about ourselves, about life, seeing the things that usually a lot of people wanna turn their heads away from. Scorpio placements, we actually look at it and inspect it and go deeper to understand it. And I think when we you know, understand that, we want to help people out. I can only speak for myself and say that I love being there for my people and really, really being honest with them. And you know, whether I'm motivating them or I'm just being honest about what I see, about what I see is happening and how I think they should approach life. You know, I'm not, I don't shy away from telling people that I love what I think they're doing and how I think they're self-destructing and what I think they should do, you know? And I love knowing that my people can come to me 
when they're feeling these negative feelings. You know, I don't like being a fair weather friend. I don't think I've ever been a fair weather friend. I think I'm the kind of friend that's going to be there for you when you are telling me that life is taking its toll on you and you don't know what's the point of it. You know, I want to show people that there is a light at the end of the tunnel. And I think a lot of Scorpio placements, that is exactly what we're good at. We're good at explaining to people that these negative feelings, they're worth something. Even though you feel like this darkness and this chapter of your life, it sucks and it's hard and you just don't see the other side of it, it's there. And your Scorpio placements, all we want to do is help you out and understand that the path is there. It didn't end. It's not ending here. Your journey is not ending here. This is just a low and there's going to be a high. So just wait for it. And we're going to hold your hand while it's coming. Okay, next is Sagittarius. What Sagittarius is hiding. Would love to find someone who makes them happy, but has trouble. Yeah, I think a lot of Sagittarius that may be, you know, just thinking about people that want romantic relationships, because I think there are people that just don't, and they don't care about that, and I'm totally, totally respectful of that. You know what I mean? Like, not everyone is here to, like, find love. That's fine. But I do think Sagittarius is that are looking for that, it's harder for them to admit that. And I think for me, it comes back to the fact that Sagittarius is, they have this untraditional need and expectations of romantic partnerships. They don't wanna be tied down. There's a certain level of freedom that is expected from them when it comes to relationships. And I've always said this, most relationships when you get in a relationship, there's just certain things you can't do anymore. Like you're kind of tied to this person. And if it's too much, it's toxic. I do think that you should still have your own individuality. But I think most of the time when you get with someone, now it's like a combo. It's the two of you. Like, is my partner going to like this? You know, it's a respect thing too. You know, you want your partner to consider you before they do a lot of things. And I think for Sagittarius's, that's very, very hard because they're so hyper-independent. But that doesn't mean that they don't want that love. But I do think that's why it's harder for them to find that love because there's less people in the world that see those same values. Doesn't mean that they're not there, but there's less of them. Because most people, when they're in a relationship, they want to be butt buddies, you know? Um, Sagittarius and Aquarius and Gemini, they truly want, you know, that separation from their partner. Like they want a partnership, but they also want to explore life and spend time with their friends and travel, you know, without their partner. You know, they want to experience life. They don't want to be attached at the hip. Um, and I think if Sagittarius has had relationships at the beginning stages of their life where they felt controlled, they can be cynical. Yes, the positive Sagittarius can be cynical when it comes to finding that right person because now they have this idea in their head that a romantic partnership means that I'm caged in and that I'm tied down and that I won't have my freedom anymore, which is just not true. You just haven't found the right person that will give you that. And I think that person definitely exists. So in the meantime, keep traveling, keep doing your thing, keep having fun with your friends, but don't ever settle with someone that wants to cage you in because you will find the right partner that also wants to do their own thing, you know? All right, next we have Capricorn. It's actually super sensitive to the world and wants to show it. Yes, yes. Listen, Capricorn is Cancer's sister sign. I always say this Capricorn is super, super sensitive. Just because they have a great poker face doesn't mean that they don't care, all right? Capricorn is very, very sensitive and it's very hard for them to express their emotions because they are scared that it won't be taken seriously. That is why they almost rather just be riding this wave of not feeling too high of emotions and not feeling too low of emotions because if they're just consistently in the middle, then they're not going to be sidetracked in life. You know, when you are going through emotional things, it's hard for you to focus and be in the present, right? And that I mean, that's just life. I think we should be able to feel our feelings and not, you know, hyper focus on is this practical right now? But, you know, Capricorn in general wants to be able to do the things that they said they're going to do. And emotions can really sometimes mess with that. Also, I think Capricorn placements have a lot of expectations, right? obviously expectations for themselves, a lot of expectations for themselves, but other people. And I think when people that they trust, because they don't trust often, the people that they trust when they have these expectations and those people mess up or maybe don't meet those expectations, it really throws Capricorn off. 
And you know, Capricorn, it's natural. Sometimes people are going to disappoint you and sometimes they're not gonna do what they say they're gonna do. It's all about figuring out if this is a habit and if it's happening consistently. But no matter what, people are sometimes gonna fuck up, even people that you've you know worked so hard to finally trust because you don't trust easily. So I think because of that, they can also be very, very sensitive and they're scared. Their inner child is scared of trusting the wrong person and putting time and effort into the wrong person and then them fucking up. So now Capricorn is left trying to pick up the pieces and trying to figure out if they were dumb for trusting you, if they were dumb for believing in you. Like Capricorn can be very, very hard on themselves when it comes to other people's fuck ups, like I've noticed that. They're almost like, why did I trust you? Why did I allow you in my life? Why did I believe in you? And then they start beating themselves up about why they allowed someone like this in their life. And it's like, it is not you, you know? You are just choosing to trust people, which is a great thing for you. Um, but you know, when people fuck them over, Capricorn can be very, very sensitive to that. That is why they don't open up often because they know how sensitive they are when they trust people and they fuck them over. Okay, next is Aquarius. What Aquarius is hiding deeply enjoys making people laugh. Is Aquarius hiding that though? I mean, I guess if maybe they're hiding that. You know, Aquarius is known to be the weirdo of the Zodiac, like proudly the weirdo of the Zodiac because you guys, you know, are such unique individuals. Um, but I have noticed, yeah, that's true. When Aquarius is like out when, or around people, even just, you know, around one person, I guess, like, they say the most outlandish shit, like they say the most out of pocket shit and it's so funny because they usually say it with such a straight face and I do love Aquarius takes because it's traditionally not going to be what everyone else is saying. Actually, sometimes I feel like they go out of their way to say the opposite of what everyone else is saying, but it's really, really fun. Aquarius, like some other signs in the Zodiac, is willing to make themselves the butt of the joke to make people laugh. Also, Aquarius is ruled by the 11th house of community and friendship, right? So I think it's really easy for them to connect people and bring people together and make them laugh in that way. And actually, one of my favorite things about Aquarius is, I don't know if this is because of my Gemini moon. I mean, I do love all Aquarius placements, but I've noticed with Aquarius placements, they get me in the sense that when something serious is happening, they're also the ones that are laughing or will make a joke. And I love that because I feel seen. And I like when people don't care. How much did I talk about? I hate people that don't break rules. I hate people that are always following the rules. And who is the top of that list? Someone who doesn't care about the rules is Aquarius. And I think, you know, people that are deeply funny, they don't care about the rules. They take it there. And I think Aquarius placements really do take it there. And I enjoy that. I love watching them do that because the shock and the horror in people's voices when Aquarius is popping off and saying shit. Oh my God. I live for it. I live for it. Okay. And then finally we have Pisces. What you're hiding is tries really hard to get the things they want. I'm trying to actually process this. And it's funny because when I think about signs that are good at manifesting, obviously I think of Jupiter ruled signs like Sagittarius and also Pisces. And we talk about how Pisces is often in that la la land and is, you know, in that dream world, they're constantly daydreaming. And what is the main aspect of manifesting things is thinking about it, right? Visualizing it. And I think Pisceans, I don't know if you guys know how good you are at manifesting. You know, all you have to do is just tap into that Piscean visualization energy and keep thinking about what you want and visualize it in your head and it'll probably come true. And I think a lot of people actually don't like to admit that they daydream often and I think a lot of us would be embarrassed if someone could see what we're daydreaming about, but you know what, fuck it. We all daydream for Pisces energy. I feel like they're constantly daydreaming about what they want, what their life should be like, who they want. I feel like y'all are constantly daydreaming about who you want. Don't even lie to me. Like actually, if there was a test done on people that are daydreaming about their crush, like Pisces would be very much at the top. You guys are such romantics when it comes to that shit. Like, truly but the thing is like why are you hiding it so like i don't know if they're hiding this and you know sometimes pisces has a hard time with the doing of things right like they're thinking about what they want and how good it would feel to have that but putting that into action i think a lot of pisces people have a hard time doing that so i think maybe this is why they're hiding this is because they actually do want it and they're trying to get it but it's sometimes hard for you guys to actually put it in action and have a step-by-step -step, you know list of how i'm going to do this and actually take the action to do it i think that's where you guys have the most difficulty 
All right, you guys, that is the end of this list. Let me know how you guys feel about it. Is this something that y'all are hiding? Let me know. And I'm trying to think, let me know if it resonated for your moon sign. Because, you know, your moon sign is like your internal world. So it's something that maybe is hidden. So I would be interested to know if it resonated more for your moon sign or your sun sign. So let me know in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe before you leave so you can be here for my next video. Don't forget to like the video because that helps me out a lot. I'm going to post the socials here and I'll see you guys on Thursday for the podcast. Bye.